Most people are told to always take methylfolate instead of folic acid, but that's not actually good advice. Let me explain the biochemistry behind both and when to take what. Okay, so folate is just another name for vitamin B9, and you naturally get it from foods like leafy greens, beets, and avocados. Your body uses it to make new blood cells, copy DNA, and even regulate your brain chemistry. That's why it's super important during pregnancy. The baby literally needs it to build its nervous system. In supplements, folate usually comes in three main forms. First, folic acid, so the cheap synthetic form that is found in most multivitamins. Then we also have folinic acid, which is a more natural in-between form. And then we have methylfolate, which is the bioactive form that your body actually uses. So the question is, why not just use methylfolate all the time if it's already active? Well, the answer has to do with how your body handles methylation. Methylation is the process of adding little chemical tags, so a methyl group, to another molecule. Think of it as flipping a switch on and off in your body. Methylation controls how you make energy, how you detoxify, and how your hormones and neurotransmitters are balanced, and even how your genes are expressed. Some people don't methylate enough. They are called undermethylators, and I'm an example of that. Others do too much, which makes them an overmethylator. Now, the tricky part is that folate can play both sides. That's why it helps some people and makes feel others worse. Now, methylfolate is the active form of folate that your body normally makes on its own from food folates through a long conversion process. If you have a variant in the MTHFR gene, you might not be good at this conversion. That's why many health blocks and even doctors tell people with MTHFR issues to always take methylfolate directly. Now, this sounds logical, right? The problem is that methylfolate works in two opposite ways. On the one hand, it acts as a methyl donor, so giving away its methyl group outside the cell. But once the folate gets inside the cell and interacts with your DNA, it can actually have a counter effect. What you have to understand is that all forms of folate, including methylfolate, switch on genes that increase neurotransmitter reuptake. That means serotonin and dopamine get pulled back into nerve cells more quickly, leaving them less available between the cells. So you end up with two competing effects, the extra methyl group that improves methylation, but also the folate itself that reduces neurotransmitter activity by boosting reuptake. For many people, especially undermethylators, who already tend to have low serotonin and low dopamine in the first place, this overall effect is negative. In practical terms, that means at first, undermethylators might feel better because of the added methyl support. But after two to three months of taking methylfolate, the neurotransmitter reuptake effect kicks in and outweighs the benefits, often leaving them feel worse off than before and crashing from one day to the next. Of course, this doesn't apply to everyone. Some undermethylators tolerate methylfolate very well. But if you've been doing well on it for a while and then suddenly crashed with symptoms like anxiety, depression, or restlessness, this mechanism is usually the reason why. It also applies mostly to people where their methylation is related to mental health problems. So methylfolate isn't bad, but it's definitely not for everyone, especially if what I just said applies to you. So if you're an undermethylator and already have low serotonin and low dopamine, then adding methylfolate to your stack, especially in very high doses, can make this problem worse in the long run. Again, the crash usually happens after two to three months, but I've also seen it take place sooner. Now, on the flip side, if you're an overmethylator, you often have too much serotonin, dopamine, and adrenaline going on because you methylate too much. In this case, lowering those neurotransmitters actually helps. But here's the catch. Overmethylators do better with folic acid or folinic acid and not methylfolate because they don't need that extra methyl group that is attached to the folate. So to answer the question of the video, overmethylators should not take methylfolate and instead go with folic acid or folinic acid. Folinic acid would be the better option, but it's also more expensive. And for undermethylators, they should be very careful with methylfolate and need to see how they react to it. Normal methylators usually do fine on folates, so methylfolate or folinic acid would both be okay. So if you don't know your methylation status, please don't jump straight into high dose methylfolate. Start low and monitor how you feel. Just as a side note, if you need more info on methylation, the right testing, and the correct protocols, please check out the description for related videos. I'll also include my recovery program, which has an entire section on fixing methylation issues naturally. 
So just open the description, it will all be listed there.